Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating system that is types of operating systems. So we'll see one by one, there are different types of operating systems. The first one is batch operating system. Batch operating system. So here, the user will not be directly interacting with the computer, right? So the user will give a jobs job 2 and job 3 and these will be placed in a punch card okay this will be placed in a punch card okay and these punch cards will be given to the operator our operator so this operator will collect these punch cards from different users okay so there will be user 1 and also user 2 so again job 1 job 2 job 3 etc etc so again this is one more punch card this is one more punch card so these punch cards will be collected by the operator and this operator will make a batches re related to the particular jobs so based upon the similarities okay based on similarities This operator will create a batches, right? Batch one. So batch one will be having a different jobs with a related similarities. Similarly, batch two. Batch two. Okay. It will be having a different uh, jobs with a related similarities. So this is how the programs will be executed in this particular batch operating system. So user will direct, will not be communicated to the system directly. So the user will create the jobs and it will be placed in a punch cards and these punch cards will be given to the operator. So operator will collect the different punch cards from different users and based upon the similarities, the operator will group the jobs and we call them as a batches and at a time one batch will be given to the CPU right and here the drawback is until the batch one completes this batch two will have to wait okay until until the CPU completes the batch one okay the batch one batch two jobs should be in a waiting position so even though so here the main drawback is CPU utilization so there will be the CPU may be in an idle state okay CPU may be in an idle state. If any process is requiring the IO operations, then the CPU have to wait until it completes the IO operation and after that only the CPU can execute the processes. So until the batch 1 completes, the batch 2. And again batch 2 completes, then only batch 3. So there might be a chance of idling, idleness of a CPU. Right? So this is about our batch operating system. So coming to the second one, in order to reduce this CPU idle time, okay, in order to reduce the CPU idle time, the second one is multi-programmed, multi-programmed operating system, multi-programmed operating system. So here the name itself indicates multiple programs will be given at a time to a CPU. So if it is a CPU, then multiple programs so job 1 job 2 job 3 right so multiple processes will be given to the cpu so that so cpu first executes the job 1 and if this job 1 requires any io so immediately the cpu will start executing this job 2 so if the job 2 is also required some IO operations, immediately the CPU will start executing the job 3. Even And still the job 3 requires any IO operations, immediately again job uh, CPU will be start resuming the job 1. So that means there will be no idle 
stage for the CPU. CPU will not be in an idle stage. So CPU will be switching between the processors based upon the I.O. operations. Right? So CPU doesn't go to the idle position. So here you can see a multiple programs are executing at a time by the CPU. So that's why we call it as a multi-programmed operating system. Multi-programmed operating system. Right? Next. The next category is multi-processing operating system. Multi-processing operating system. So coming to this multi-processing operating system. So a memory will be there. And there will be a different processors. There will be a different processors accessing the memory. So at a time, multiple processes. Okay, job one. Job two. Similarly, job one. Job two. So here, the multiple processors will be having will be connected to the same computer multiple processors using the multiple processors okay so here we are having a two processors and the jobs are divided between two processors okay so here the cpu will execute the job one job two and cpu will be execute the job one job two but both the processors are connected with to the same system so connected to the same computer same computer so automatically so the jobs will be shared right so easily and fast we can execute the jobs so one more thing if any one of the processor fails automatically the jobs will be executed by the another processor so this is the main advantage of using this multi-processing so the name itself indicates multi-processing means multiple processors will be connecting to the same computer and the programs will be get executed right this is the next one we'll move on to the next one next type of operating system distributed operating system distributed operating system so also we can call it as a network operating system so there will be a lot of uh, computers connected okay So here the jobs will be distributed by the different processes. The jobs will be distributed to the different processes. So at a time we can execute the multiple processes. Okay, multiple processes. And see if any one fails, automatically the remaining processes will be executed. Okay, there will be no much impact on that. So the processes, the jobs will be distributed. The processes will be distributed right throughout the network throughout the network so there should be some connection connection between all the networks and this uh, the jobs will be shared between all the systems of a network so this type of operating system we call it as a distributed operating system and the next one is multitasking multitasking operating system so it is nothing but uh, logical extension logical extension logical extension of multi programmed multi programmed operating system so here also uh, multiple tasks will be given to the same cpu Okay, multiple tasks will be given to the same CPU. So it will be executing the multiple task. So the, here also there will be no CPU idle state. Okay, so that's why we call it as a logical extension of multi-programmed operating system. Right. Next, time sharing operating system. Time sharing operating system. So in this time sharing operating system, so the name itself indicates some time will be given for each and every process. Okay. So for example, CPU need to execute 
three processes some p1 p2 and some p3 so it will allocate some time to this one so let it be the p1 should execute i mean it requires some 5 milliseconds to execute and it is 4 milliseconds to execute it is some 3 milliseconds to execute so cpu allocates some 3 milliseconds for each process okay 3 milliseconds for each process right equal distribution so after 3 milliseconds automatically the cpu will be given to the p2 so here the remaining is 2 milliseconds okay and here whenever the p2 comes into the processor it will execute 3 milliseconds and only 1 milliseconds is required and again after 3 milliseconds again the cpu will be given to the p3 the process okay the cpu will be given to the p3 to be get executed so p3 will be executed three three times so it will complete and once again it will come to the process one and it will execute this one and again after completion of p1 it moves to the p2 right so like this some sort of time will be given for each process to get executed right so here uh, there is a difference between the multi programmed and the time sharing so in the multi program the system will be divided that means the system will be allocated to the processor based upon the io operations if p1 gets the io operations requires io operations so instead of maintaining the cpu idle it will move to the p2 but here after every given time time the cpu will be given to the next processes okay so this is the time sharing operating system and the next one is a real time operating system real time operating system so in this real time operating system so we'll be having some time limit and within the time limit only the process should be executed okay so the process should be executed within the time limit process should be executed within the time limit so if it exceeds automatically we'll get some error okay so this this is a special type of operating system which gives a time limit for each process to be get executed so usually it will be used for embedded systems embedded systems okay embedded systems and here there are two types of real time operating systems one is hard real time operating system hard real time operating system and soft real time operating system soft real time operating system so here there is a slight difference between hard and soft so in both the cases the the system will give some time limit and within the time limit we have to complete the process so if the time limit exceeds in this hard re hard real time automatically it leads to the failure system failure or critical failures okay critical failures or a device or a system whatever it may be a critical failure leads to a critical failure so when the process execute i mean exceeds the time limit okay the execution of process exceeds the time limit automatically it leads to the critical failure so that's called a hard real time operating system so within the perfect time limit the process should be get executed and coming to the soft real time so it may accept accept a few delay so if the pro process execution exceeds the time limit so nothing happens here okay that that type of thing we call it as a soft real time operating systems right so these are all the different types of operating systems so i'll write one by one i will list out and i will wind up so the first operating system is batch batch operating system the next one multi programmed operating system multi processing operating system distributed operating system multi tasking operating system time sharing a 
real time operating system right so the, these are the different types of operating system okay so hope you understood this uh, different types of operating systems and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much